So in this lesson, we'll examine evolution as a response um, to the environment um, or some sort of pressure in the environment um, that causes some of the organisms in the population to survive at a higher rate than others. In the previous lesson, we examined the length of giraffe necks, and we saw that the longer necks were actually selected for, whereas the, uh, s the shorter necks were selected against. So they died off, while the ones with the uh, longer necks um, had a favorable advantage to survive and reproduce. And in, the, in this example, the environmental pressure happened to be the food source that they were all competing for. In the second example, we'll examine the bacteria cells that you can find all over the planet um, and how the environmental pressures uh, determine how they evolve. The image on the left, produced by an electron microscope, uh, is a picture of uh, E. coli, a bacteria that lives in your intestines. But there's all sorts of different types of, um, of bacteria that exist on the planet, all sorts of different shapes and sizes with different traits. Now remember, your traits are all determined by the sequences of A's, T's, G's, and C's in your DNA. So whether it's a new eye color, or a fifth leg, or resistance to an antibiotic, it all starts at a random mutation in the genetic material. But once the gene for the trait is produced, all it takes is a single bacterium to survive that initial dose of the antibiotic before it replicates into billions of bacterial cells that all carry the same gene. But oftentimes, that initial mutation occurs not in the bacteria, but in a virus, or another species of bacteria, um, or in another species completely. But how does the initial bacterium get the mutation in the first place? Well, there's a couple different methods. Uh, the first mechanism is where a bacteriophage, this is a, a virus that attacks a bacteria cell, it'll inject it, its DNA, and the DNA will then become part um, of the bacteria's uh, DNA or plasmids. Transformation refers to uh, the DNA just entering the cell by itself, and conjugation actually uses something called a peleus, which is a sort of like a tube that connects both of the two bacteria, and uh, they can pass along DNA freely um, through that peleus. This is a closer look of the last mechanism of incorporating DNA into a bacteria cell. Conjugation um, involves uh, two different bacteria cells uh, that are passing along a plasmid that contains the genes through the peleus, as we said before, um, into the new bacterium. So that's a mechanism that bacteria cells use um, often to transfer genes from one bacteria to another. So on the figure on the right, uh, the bottom shows you uh, sort of a color spectrum of the resistance level. Um, the darker red over here on the right um, shows that it's very resistant to the antibiotic, whereas the yellow on the left shows that it's not very resistant to the antibiotic. It'll, uh, the bacteria will be killed if it's exposed to that chemical. So the process of developing antibiotic resistance in bacteria really um, can be summed up in three steps. The first step, as you can see, there's all sorts of different variation of these resistance levels present within the population of the initial uh, bacteria. Um, after there's a selection process, meaning that let's say there was, there was exposed to penicillin or ampicillin or campomycin, then a lot of the bacteria will end up being killed off. Um, the first ones to go would be the ones that are less resistant from the other ones, the, the lighter colored ones. Um, but because there are a few bacteria that already have the mutation um, for antibiotic resistance, they're the only ones that actually survive. Because they're the ones that survive, then they reproduce, and those genes are now passed on to their offspring. And so the final population of bacteria are all resistant to the antibiotic.